terrific tips to expand your current hummingbird garden and multiply your best performing hummingbird and butterfly attractors through divisions and cuttings. For gardeners on a budget, stick around. Nailed the intro. Gold Flame Honeysuckle, one of the premier nectar rich vines that you can use to attract hummingbirds. You want to choose new spring growth for your cuttings. This is a good example with this nice red shoot here and green foliage as opposed to this older woodier growth. This is the good stuff. We're going to make cuttings. To make the cutting, you want to go right below a leaf node. So we're going to cut right here. Here's another healthy stem on the Alabama Crimson variety. So we're going to cut him right below the node. So what you want to do is, where you've made your cut, you're going to cut off the leaves. I'm going to trim this down to about here. Here's where the leaf node is on the plant. There's a lot of potential cell development here. So what I'm going to do is just going to give it a slice. And we're going to use some rooting hormone. Just a little bit. I'm applying right where I made all those cuts. And that should help to promote growth. I also want to cut the tips here of the plant. I'm going to cut these leaves off as well. This is what a proper cutting looks like. We're going to go ahead and put it in the pot. This is about a quart pot. And just place it in there nice. I'll let that hormone do its action. You know how hormones are. This guy is just going to sit for a few days and then I'll give it some water, maybe give it a little Reiki <laughs> and it's good to go. And that's a Lonicera cutting. You can do as many as you want and multiply your nectar. Your new cuttings can go directly in the ground exactly where you want them planted. Just poke a little hole here and insert your new babies. Hi, Catbird. Well, you've got a lot to say this morning, don't you? Here's an example of Lonicera sempervirens exactly one year after I performed cuttings. I made cuttings from shoots on five little plants. This one is about two feet tall and blooming. And you can apply that root hormone technique to nearly any herbaceous perennial or woody plant, including the fabulous cross vine. Canna indica is super easy to work with. They're very rugged. As long as you can keep them from freezing, you're gonna be fine. So I have the, I had kept these in bags over winter. I keep these bags in the basement to keep them from freezing. And as you can see, they're already starting to shoot up in the basement. I got them going back in here. This is my little compost type area. About a foot apart. The key here is to plant them very shallow. If you plant them shallow, it, the sun will beat down, warm up the tubers, and it triggers them to start growing. And these will start shooting up like a rocket within a few weeks, as long as there's no frost in the future and you've got some warm weather coming. Really the most difficult part of this job is digging them out in the late summer. But if you have sandy soil, they pop out pretty easy. And you'll be amazed by how much they multiply during this growing season. For Cacrosmia lucifer, you can triple your yield on these by dividing them every year or two. So these are related to irises, but their root system is really a series of corms that are stacked stacked up against each other. I'm going to dig one out. It's best to perform this division in the fall or winter even in my zone. So here we have the Crocosmia lucifer. And this has been sitting in the ground for a year. And it has, if you look at it closely, three corm, four corms that can be twisted off, separated, and replanted to get, you can start a new colony with these. These are really good for hummingbirds. So you can go ahead and split them up and increase your yield. 
There is a top and a bottom to these. You'll see the little root systems sort of splaying out for the bottoms. There's the bottom. So what I'll do is I'll dig about a four inch deep trough and just line them in there. I'm spacing these about five inches apart, three to four inches deep and that will start up a new colony of Crocosmia lucifer. Divide and conquer with Crocosmia lucifer. My neighbor's beehive is swarming. Check this out. There's thousands and thousands of honeybees here. Look at this. They're not touching me, but they're swarming. Run for your life. Well, it looks like they've collected right in the middle of my cedar tree. And the neighbor's gonna come over and collect this swarm. There's gotta be several thousand here. The surgeon has done his work. Bee balm is one of the easiest plants to divide nearly any time of year, except for right before it wants to start blooming. Here's a good clump of bee balm. And what you can do with bee balm is it just has very shallow underground roots and I just cut it away with a masonry trowel and just separate the root system. Here's a nice little flat ready for transplanting. For the taller stalks in the spring, you just want to pinch them back. If you pinch them back, you will get two blooms off of each stalk. So you'll double your blooms. So we have a shallow hole here dug out in a part shade location. And this will be the new spot. We're going to colonize this area with some more Jacob Klein bee balm. And you can see it, the root system is just sort of ne a network of shallow roots. So we're gonna have a nice, this is all gonna start to spread. These are nice spreaders. And these will probably bloom this year. I'm doing this in late April. They have plenty of time to settle in and, and, and bloom up. Here's a couple of new bee balm varieties that I've never tried. This is called Minarda Fireball. These are pretty healthy plants. I'm just breaking up the bottom of the root system here a little bit, not too much. It's supposed to be a compact bee balm, so it's going to go in the front of the garden beds. These grow to about one to two feet. Their root systems will probably meet up to each other within a year or two because these are underground spreaders. They're in the mint family and they're one of those that just spread with underground runners. The list of related herbaceous perennials that radiate out with a spreading root system is almost endless. This includes baptisia, lavender, catmint, obedient plant, and many more. And these are all very important plants for the pollinators. And this is the most effective way to divide and relocate them in your yard. For columbine, I let the plants self-sow over winter and they'll scatter about on their own. And you can divide these just like we did with the bee balms in large clumps. For lupins, I sow these from seed. It's a whole lot cheaper than buying them from nurseries. These were all sown last year. There's about six of them in here. And this guy is about to bloom. I'm not sure what color it's gonna be, but they are very easy to grow from seed. Hello, house wren. Last year, the house wrens opted for apartment 1A on the left. And this year, it looks like they're choosing the executive chalet. Both bird houses were restored and remodeled this winter, complete with new roofing. And this year, the room and board is free. For sunflowers, I like to grow these in large pots and then separate them when they're big enough to handle and transplant out into the garden. Here's a few more baby sunflowers. Also zinnias the same way in large pots and then transplant them out. 
and with the sunflowers, the finches will sometimes sow them for me. This is a nice sized clump of red hot poker Alcazar variety. And this particular plant is pretty matted down and it's congested here with the foliage. It's a great candidate for division. We're gonna set up and give it a chop. <laughs> and what you wanna do is find a reasonable part line. This is where we're gonna give it a shovel cut with a spade shovel, a sharp spade shovel. And trust the process, these will divide pretty easily. So I've opened it up right here. This is gonna be a nice clean cut. We're gonna, just gonna go straight down perpendicular to the ground, give it a good chop, follow along here, another chop. These do have a, a, quite a bit of a root system. So I'm going out here, just cutting a half a pie shape around. Oh, you're gonna have a nice, happy new home. And there it is, you just pop it right out. You can see where it's just split there in half. That'll heal up good. There's some of the roots. We're gonna lift him out and give him a new, new home. We're just increasing the nectar resources in the garden. These plants prefer to be kind of high up in the ground. So I'm just moving some of this soil. This is pretty good soil at this point. I've been amending it. All this brown material is last year's old growth. So you want to clear it out because slugs and bugs try to get, they'll get in there. And the plant really doesn't like that. So give it a good cleaning, get rid of this old material and it'll help the new growth for this year pop up much easier. Yeah, here we go, there's more. I Actually, I do this a couple times a year. Just getting rid of the old material. Keep it nice and happy. It doesn't look too happy right now, but it's gonna be just fine. I'm transplanting the entire division here to ensure I get blooms for this year, but this clump could easily be broken down into several smaller pieces, and you can trade them with your friends. Be sure to press these guys firmly into the ground to eliminate any air pockets and make sure to water them in thoroughly. All mulched in and ready for action. Dirty hands equals gardening progress. Some of you guys may have seen my overwintering black and blue salvia video that I published last fall. Well, here it is, here's an update. So this is the old woody growth that I cut back. We covered this up with leaf mulch and plastic tarping. And here it is now putting on new growth. This is all gonna sprout up and give me great black and blue blooms for the hummingbirds. Well, that was a lot of fun. If you guys have any particular requests for related gardening topics, please chime in in the comments below. If you like this video, please give it a like. And I hope you have a terrific gardening day.